Hi YouTube, this is Evie. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. I'm going to be talking about Fox Play. Now keep in mind for this video that I am not a Fox player myself. I'm a puppy player so I don't have any personal experience with actually doing Fox Play. So if I don't mention something that you do that's really important to your Fox Play or I mention something that you never do ever and why would a fox do that? I'm sorry. I am just going off of the research that I have found on the internet and my personal experiences with my friends that I know who are foxes. Also keep in mind, I am not trying to talk about how to take care or raise a real fox, be that a wild fox or a domesticated fox. I don't have any experience with real foxes, wild or domestic. Uh, so just, you know, keep that in mind. The research that I have done about domestic foxes and how they are raised is strictly just to help people create a more realistic kind of fox play rather than trying to help people actually raise real foxes. The first thing to know is, because I know a lot of people that watch this video maybe haven't seen any of my other videos about pet play, in which case, hi, welcome to my channel, I'm Evie, uh, but I'm going to talk about what is fox play, just really briefly. Fox play is a form of BDSM where somebody, generally the submissive, is taking on the role of a fox while the dominant is usually a human who is being the owner, master, handler, trainer, etc. of that particular fox. Now it is not always the case that the dominant of the fox is a human, they could be another animal, and it's not always the case that the fox is the submissive one, but generally speaking the most common dynamic you will see is between a submissive fox and a dominant human handler owner. Fox play is a form of BDSM, but it doesn't actually mean that people literally believe that they are foxes. They don't believe that their soul is actually that of a fox. It's different than being a furry or a therian or anything like that. Uh, but I'm not going to be getting that you know, too involved or in too much detail in this video, but you know, fox play is a form of BDSM, so keep that in mind while you are watching this video. Now, foxes are definitely not one of the most popular pets, not like, you know, kittens or, or uh, puppies or anything like that. They are increasingly common, however. Um, they are most common, I would say, on the internet. They don't really have any sort of basis in, you know, leather culture like puppy play does. They don't have, like, you know, a long history behind them like pony play does. Um, so it is mostly on the internet that you're going to find, you know, fox players that how to do fox play. Uh, with that in mind, uh, because the fact doesn't have any sort of, you know, rooted history in the BDSM community, there's not really any sort of, you know, larger understanding of how to do fox play or, you know, how it's different from doing puppy play or how it's do it different from doing kitten play. It is very much something of your own creation, something that you definitely make yourself. But at the same time, because there's not any sort of, you know, guidelines from any sort of larger fox play community like there is for puppy play, it's really easy to get lost and not really know how to do fox play or, you know, how to make it realistic. I would say in a lot of ways, foxes can actually be very similar um, to dogs or, you know, participating in a puppy play. So I think, you know, if you were interested in puppy play, that is definitely a good thing to research and you can adopt a lot of those things and incorporate them into your fox play. Uh, keep in mind with actual foxes, there's wild foxes and there's domesticated foxes. So even within that, you can really vary your kind of play. You know, you could be a wild fox, you could be a domestic fox, and all of that is going to impact how you do your fox fox play. For this video, I'm going to be mostly talking about domestic foxes, uh, though obviously if you are a wild fox, you can totally incorporate some of these things too as well if you want to. And on top of there being domestic and wild fox, there's also a lot of different, you know, subspecies and different types of foxes. Uh, for example, there are red foxes, which tend to be the largest of all the foxes, and they're also the most dog-like when they are domesticated. There's arctic foxes, which are smaller than, than red foxes, and they tend to be more temperamental and they're less common than red foxes are. Uh, fennec foxes, I believe, are the most common kind of domestic fox, uh, partially because of their size. They are the smallest of all of the foxes, 
but they do also go through a lot of, you know, temperamental phases, and they have a big personality change as they become adults. Uh, so there's a lot of different kinds of personalities and different kinds of foxes. Obviously, there are way more foxes than what I just mentioned. You know, there are gray foxes, there are silver foxes, there are foxes that are crossbreed between, you know, different, you know, an arctic and a red fox cross, you know, there's all sorts of different kinds of foxes you can play with. Each one of them has sort of their own personality quirks and their own sort of preferences and behavior patterns that are slightly different, but for the most part you can sort of adopt whatever I'm going to be talking about in this video to any kind of breed or subspecies of fox that you would want to. The appeal of fox play is going to be coming from the unique personality aspects of, you know, being a fox versus being a kitten or being a dog. Uh, in a lot of ways, foxes in their behavior when they're domesticated can be very dog-like, but they have their own unique personalities. They're very energetic, they're very witty, they can definitely be, you know, tricksters and mischievous. At the same time, they can also be somewhat timid around new environments and new people, so they generally, if they're around something new, they're sort of, they'll hang back, they'll check it out, they'll make sure, hey, this thing's not trying to kill me before they actually, you know, go in and start investigating the situation. They can also be more independent than a lot of dogs will be. I would say they're more like Shibas in their personality than they are like, say, you know, a Labrador. They can be a bit more independent, not necessarily aloof, uh, but they can definitely take care of themselves in a way that a lot of domestic dogs really can't. This isn't to say that there's not like clingy foxes or foxes who are, you know, lap dogs, quote unquote, you know. Foxes can totally be those things, it's just more common that foxes will be more independently minded than your average dog. They do also have a lot of really interesting personality traits that makes them different to own versus, you know, a puppy or a kitten. So, for example, uh, when a fox sees a human that they know and they're greeting a human, their tail will curl up, they'll wag, they'll approach them and ask for pets in a lot of the same ways that a dog would. Uh, like a cat, whiskers are a very good way uh, to actually tell uh, what a fox is thinking about something. Generally, whis whiskers that are facing forward tends to be more alert, more cautious, uh, more so trying to take in all their environment, where whiskers that are laid back uh, generally tend to be more relaxed and, you know, you know, less concerned, less active worry than whiskers facing forward. I know that whiskers and, uh, you know, tail movement is going to be a little bit harder to replicate when you're just playing a fox as opposed to, you know, actually being a fox, but, you know, you can draw whiskers on your face, you can do different sort of facial expressions that would mimic, you know, your face kind of going forward and, like, looking very contrived versus having, like, a very relaxed face, um, but it's just something to think about when you are trying to incorporate more, like, fox-like behavior in, you know, to your particular BDSM dynamic and into your type of play also bark and whine. They have a ton of vocalizations. I mean a ton. Like, they whine, they bark, they they cackle. I've, I've heard them make almost sort of purring-like noises before. They cackle. They do, like, so many weird noises. Like, foxes just make weird alien noises sometimes. It's very bizarre. If you want to, you should totally go look up on YouTube, like, different fox noises. Because basically, if it's a noise you can make as a human, a fox will probably use that for something. I wasn't actually able to find, like, a sort of concise list that made, like, a correlation between, you know, different sounds that foxes make versus, you know, what they mean. I'm sure there's more videos like that out there when you get more in-depth research. But generally speaking, foxes make a ton of noises and they're generally pretty like noisy and gregarious creatures. At the same time, uh, foxes also tend to be more active during the evening and nighttime hours than during the day. So very much if you are the kind of person who enjoys being up until 3 o'clock in the morning, being a fox may be the right fit for you. They also have a lot of tendencies because they are recently domesticated animals that are something that we have managed to get out of dogs and a lot of other domesticated animals, but that foxes still do. Like, for example, they will scent mark. Uh, they will do it pretty much no matter <laughs> how much you try and stop them. So you can incorporate that if you're more of a bratty fox, like scent marking, quote unquote, uh, your owner's things or your owner's bed and claiming them as your own. You could totally do something like that. They are also, again, extremely energetic. They need a lot of things to be able to stay entertained, to run off their energy. They're generally very, like, like spunky and just kind of weird. Like, I'm going to keep saying the word weird because foxes are just very, like, 
all of the videos I've seen of foxes are just like very, they're like running around, checking stuff out, and they're very like active. So if you have a pet fox or you are a pet fox, that's something to keep in mind. You're going to be very active. At the same time, like dogs, if you are playing a domesticated fox, you can teach them tricks. You can teach them how to use a litter box. You can teach them how to use a harness or walk on a leash. You can teach them basic commands. Generally, they're not as trainable as say like a Labrador or a German Shepherd would be, but they are very intelligent animals and they benefit a lot from enrichment activities such as, you know, treats and training and games that sort of require them to like use their mind to like solve puzzles or figure out what you're trying to tell them to do. So foxes are very much capable of learning tricks and walking on a leash and learning all the stuff just like a puppy player would. Speaking of treats, uh, what do foxes eat? What should you eat if you're trying to replicate a fox's diet? Again, foxes are going to be very similar to dogs here. A lot of foxes that are domesticated will have a diet that is a majority uh, dried dog food with a little bit of fruit and vegetables mixed in. Uh, foxes are omnivores, so they will eat pretty much anything. They're also opportunists as well, so they're very much happy eating fruits and vegetables just as they would be eating meat. Uh, for some examples for food and some different treats you can have. Basically anything you would give a dog or a puppy player is going to work well as a fox. You could use ground beef or, you know, fake ground beef substitute. If you are a vegetarian fox, uh, you could do ribs, you could do any kind of uh, like rib bones, things like that. You could make homemade dog treats, obviously, that are bit for human consumption. You can do uh, fruits and vegetables. You can do all kinds of things like that, which really work out well. You can do cereal as well. There's just so many different kinds of treats and ways to stimulate, you know, fox food or dog food that would work well for this particular kind of pet. There's only a few things that you shouldn't give a dog or you shouldn't give a fox that you want to keep in mind. Those are going to be grapes, raisins, avocados, and chocolate. So if you're trying to stay realistic with your fox play, just avoid those four and pretty much, you know, anything else you're going to try. If you're inclined to try it, do it. And if that makes you feel like a fox, awesome. Keep doing it. That is good for you. To summarize it all up, foxes are very similar to dogs in a lot of ways, but they do have a lot of their own unique personality aspects to them. They can be tricky, witty, uh, they can be a lot of fun, they are generally very energetic, they can be kind of almost smart-assy in a lot of ways, so they do lend themselves to bratting very well if you are a bratty kind of pet. But again, they are definitely their very own unique animal. Uh, foxes, again, are not super common pets, but they are on the rise. If you are interested in fox play and want to find other fox players, I recommend checking out places like Tumblr or Instagram or even on FetLife, maybe a place where you could find fellow fox players. But yeah, uh, that is all I have to say about fox play. If you guys found this video helpful, please feel free to, you know, give this video a thumbs up, leave any comments or questions you have down below. And until I see you next time, have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.